Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Line of God's Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today I will be continuing the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 64. O oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the, mel the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down the mountains, flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth, and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned. In those is continuance, and we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, and thou art potter, and we, are, we all are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity for ever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. The holy cities are a wilderness, Zion is a wilderness, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One thing we're going to go ahead and start here in terms of my analysis of Isaiah 64. I like this. There, the, the, uh, this sequence of verses here, starting with Isaiah 64, 6 through 8. They're some of my favorite verses from this chapter. It's not a long chapter, but these verses stand out to me in terms of being very beautiful. So let's go ahead and read these verses again. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So when we first look at that verse, that's Isaiah 64, 6, but we are all as an unclean thing. So this idea that they are tainted by original sin, and that as the next, sen the next part of that sentence, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, I equate that to the wisdom of this world as foolishness with God. You know, you think about, for example, Samson, the strongest judge of the judges. And Samson, um, for all his righteousness, which is still good, ultimately we remember Samson's legacy based off of the lust that he could not control. He knew it was a sin. He was a Jew, so he was versed in God's Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not adulter. However, the, the lust was too much for him. And that is an example of how our righteousness are as filthy rags. And that's very important to understand because it connects back to one of the ideas of how it is not through our own strength that, you know, I mean, human beings, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about myself, though even I, as the Spirit of God, always say, I, I do not, it is not by strength of arms that one achieves victory, but by the Lord their God. I talk about this throughout my whole series because of the fact that it's true. So that idea that you know, David censusing the people, looking to, you know, show that he has power because of the numbers of the men that he commands, and God's wrath was on him, upon David, because God is telling David, you know, I am the reason why you achieve these victories, and now you think that because of your victories and you've gained these numbers, that now you want to count numbers instead of glorifying and serving God. 
And so that's the idea here that our righteousness are as filthy rags. You know, the idea that men's wisdom is foolishness with God, that man should not be looking to solve every problem first out of his own strength, but first by serving God. And, and then next here, and, and we all do fade as a leaf. You know, the idea that once sin entered the world, man died. You know, I, I, t- I talk about this all the time that, you know, man was not meant initially to die. You know, it's man's own disobedience to God that caused their death. And then their further disobedience to God, as written in Genesis 6, that shortened their lifespan from a thousand years to what we see today. The Bible teaches 120 years in Genesis 6. However, in Psalm, we read how David writes, King, King David writes, 70 years or 80 years. I don't remember which one, but he says, for the strong. So that shortening of life is a result of sin. Sin entering into the world. Sin directly being disobedience with God. So that that is the uh, the idea there. And then it says, and then we continue on in Genesis 64, 7. Actually, I'll skip to Genesis 64, 8 because this is a little bit um, more more imagery that I wanted to share with you. Um, because here it says, Genesis 64, 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay, and thou art potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. You know, I think about the verse in Genesis a lot, and I, I think it's just so beautiful because um, you get an idea of, of how the creation what the creation of man looked like which is not this like um for you know in this time period like uh there's a show called game of thrones and on game of thrones there's this character called the night king who's the king of these evil people called the night walkers and one scene he raises his hand at the this battle of hard home and he raises all the people from the ground and their eyes are like blue and they're like necrotic basically like they're undead that is nothing like what the creation of man was and we see here um Uh, how beautiful it is. Um, here in Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that is the idea there. The idea that God breathes into the into man. Let me read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. So God breathing into the nostrils of the dust of that he just he formed man out of the dust. And then you see here the verse in Isaiah 64 8 reads, We are the clay and thou are our thou art potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. So that idea that here, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that idea of, you know, connecting back, um, you know, to the idea that, that the Father, you know, he literally created man by breathing into dust, formed man out of the dust of the earth. And um, how, how powerful that is because of the fact that It shows a good amount of respect to the Creator, God Father, for everything that He's done. I think that about concludes the analysis that I have for this chapter. So with that now, I'll go ahead and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Dive video. Since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I worked at my chest, I worked at my legs, I created, uploaded, and will schedule today's Daily Dive video for 12 30 23. And uh, other than that, I have no further uh, achievements that I want to share. So with that, I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel. Light to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.